Thank you, uh, Stephen. Thank you, uh, Alan. I wasn't aware that uh, that uh, leaving gum on some types of stamps would actually lead to their destruction. Yes, there are some notes about this in Scott in various places, and uh, there's some from Germany too, right, Stephen? I'm not sure. I, I I've never heard that about hmm. German ones. No, uh, I think a perfect think American example. A, a perfect it, American example is the first self-adhesive was a Christmas stamp. And uh -huh. if, oh, if, yes. you, if you leave the gum on mint versions of that one, the stamp turns yellow and then starts to deteriorate from mm -hmm. there. But I'd like to suggest, Fred, and I'm sorry, except Jennifer, for the exception that to, Alan was talking about, the, the very rare stuff, what we call mint no gums as collectors. I call them orphans because they're neither mint nor used. And generally, if, if they're recent, then they, they, then they only have one purpose left in life and that's to use as postage. Yeah, you can- I don't think you off. guys are barking. I think you guys are barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> okay, set the us straight. Is, there is a notation called N G A I. No gum as issued. The German stamps of the Nazi era, early 19, late 1930s. The gum was a self was an acid type based gum. If the gum was left on the stamp long enough. It would start to deteriorate or self-destruct. Take your choice of the two words. Yes, here's an example. I'm looking in the uh, in the classic specialized catalog, Scott uh, catalog. In the airmail section C57 and C58, these are the uh, the Hindenburg airship stamps. Okay. Um, there's a note here that says unused values are for stamps without gum. And those are the ones that, you know, if you leave the gum on, it darkens and um, ruins the stamp, stains it. It is right. the exception. That's not, the, 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 the cases of those are so rare. Well, that, that's right. But, you know, it, it's something that does happen. So if we're going to cover the subject of stamps without gum, that, that deserves to be mentioned. Although, as you say, they're not common. Now, right. the, the, those are the ones with the picture of the Hindenburg on it, correct? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And there's about 10 of them all together. So is it all of them or? Well, this note only applies to um, these two. Uh, this catalog only goes up to 1940. Okay. And there were some issued apparently after 1940 to which the same note applies. But in this catalog, only those two are listed. I have eight out of the 10 Hindenburgs. I don't remember which two numbers I'm missing, but they're the uh, polar. Do they have the gum on them? Yeah, I think all of them do. Look at them. Take a look at them. Yeah, I, I guess I, I know will. the ones you're talking about. Th those are not the ones that have a problem with the gum. These these are inexpensive stamps. Um, oh, okay. The ones the C fifty seven and eight. Mm -hmm. What should you do if they're on cover? I suppose it would be possible to remove the stamp and then re reattach it. I think once you wetted the gum, um, at least a large portion of whatever it's going to corroding has, has, has disappeared in that process.
because I, I want have... to thank all of you. Uh, that was a very interesting discussion. Yeah, I thought and, so too. Uh, I learned I learned uh, a lot, and um, and it's interesting to hear all the different opinions. Thank you very much.